chief of the South African Navy, Vice Admiral Longane, and your command council. Thank you very much once again for the opportunity to, to host this uh, very important event. Um, and uh, I'm not going to follow the protocol, but I would like to just greet all the uh, dignitaries that are joining online. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm not going to have a long presentation because uh, most of the stuff that I wanted just to discuss uh, has been covered by the, the colleagues at Drytec and the Chief Navy has covered some of the stuff. Um, but um, I believe that um, I'm not going to pr promote products. I just need that. I believe that we should have a debate and engagement because this is a, a very, very um, uh, important subject. So when I was asked to look at this, I um, just thought maybe I should look at what other countries are doing in terms of this subject. Um, so the information that I'm going to go through is not always factual, it's online because I cannot really uh, talk about other countries' uh, uh, security issues, but I'm hoping that information is as accurate as possible. So I just picked up three countries that I was of interest and that I at least at some stage had some exposure to in terms of what they do. Uh, right. Now, this is very interesting, and some of the things are subjective, but if you look at the first country, um, Vietnam, their biggest challenge, amongst other things, is uh, they believe that they have terrorists uh, called Chinese. That's not my view, that's not my opinion. So it's, it is their threat, um, but also amongst other biggest threat they have is illicit um, smuggling of cigarettes. Um, so those are, are the big issues that the, the Vietnamese have. And if you look at the economy of Vietnam, it's not too different from ours. Um, uh, so they have then have um, what they, they've proposed um, solutions. Um, one of the solution is that uh, they have now installed a long coastal surveillance radius. Um, and what is interesting about that is that uh, some of the solution they provided is uh, they are supported by our companies in South Africa. And that's quite important that uh, other countries see a potential that we don't see ourselves. That's a very important part. But the other creative solution they've done is that, as you can see down there on the fishing trawler, they've actually taken the oldest fishing trawlers, put state-of-the-art um, senses and, 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 and uh, different materials to spy on the Chinese. Um, but what, what I, I take out of this is that sometimes we, not, you know, we do not sit back and complain about budget cuts and this and that. We need to improvise because it's very important for the, for the economy of, of our country. Um, and then the next one, if you look, the, the, the middle one is um, India. Again, for a long time, India, as much as it... it uh, manages the Indian Ocean, it wasn't really in control for a very longest of time. Um, and again, the Chinese uh, fishing patrollers was one of the big problem. Again, they see them as, as a biggest threat. But also, if you look at the border of Pakistan, that side, they really have serious problems with um, uh, what they call terrorists. I'm not too sure whether they are terrorists or not, but they, they, that's what they call. Um, I think around about five years, uh, they also embark on a long coastal surveillance system radius. Now, you must acknowledge that uh, India is probably, if I'm not mistaken, has the second largest fleet of, of, of the Navy after US. But this tells you that ships alone are not a, sol a solution. For the, for the threats along the coast. And we need to keep that in mind when we talk about these things. And, and, and the Chief Navy alluded to the fact that the, 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 the maritime security is uh, everybody's problem. And uh, I think us as an industry as well, we need to really think about what we should do in the absence of, or uh, in the challenge of the parish constraint, because one of the solution maybe moving forward is to produce equipment that we can loan to the Defence Force, uh, loan, um, but 
in the long term, it's also helped us to test our own stuff, and it's also helped us to probably be able to market, but in the meantime, it will help us to minimize the impact of our own um, resources that are being uh, looted. Um, then on the, last on the last slide, you'll see that um, the country that I mentioned there is uh, Iran. Now, the, the, again, Iran doesn't have a big sea, but it, that's a Strait of Hormuz, I think. Um, again, they have a different defini definition of their own terrorist. Um, you'll see the aircraft carrier there. That's what they see as terrorists for themselves. I'm not saying that. Um, but um, what, what they've done, it's actually um, a very interesting solution. Again, it's a country that has been in isolation that is technically poorer. Um, but what they've done with these um, fast patrol boats that they've developed themselves in country, uh, probably they produce these things uh, probably, let's say, three, four a month. Um, and then what they then did, they come up with a very creative solution to put in surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Uh, and these boats... Uh, I had a privilege to, to sail on one of them. They are quite fast. They, you can go up to 70 knots on these things. Obviously, they've got a very flat sea. It's, it suits their environment because they look at what their environment has. And, 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 and their strategy, because they know that they can never buy an aircraft carrier, but they know that if they can swarm the aircraft carrier, they send almost 30 of these at different air speed. Obviously, they are very low in terms of the radar signature. So. Uh, they, 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 it's very difficult to detect them from a distance. But even if you do, because they're fast, maybe you can take out, because you need to scram the, the, the aircraft from the aircraft carrier and fly, but maybe you'll take out 10. The other 15 will still destroy you. But these are genius, innovative ways to deal with uh, challenges of not having money, but still do something about the, <coughs> the, the problems that you have. Um, this is the, down in the below, you will see that they, they, they simulated an attack on the aircraft carrier. And these things are a serious threat to the aircraft carrier. What, now, what they're now probably doing is that um, they've realized that uh, as much as they have, I think they have one or two surface-to-surface surface missile on, on these boats. I'm not, still not too sure how they fire these things because those, those missiles are very heavy. But anyway, now they're looking at having another fleet on the side that the way they were going to have um, surface to air so that while they, they're charging towards the target, they're not vulnerable from the, from the, um, um, from the aerial side. So the, the idea of this light is to say South Africa is unique, just like everybody else. So we need to create solutions and innovative ways to deal with the, with the budget constraint. All right. Um, now, Coming to our challenges, um, our problems are many, but uh, fortunately for now, we don't really have, or at least the insurgents are not the biggest problem at this stage, if at least we can manage the Mozambique situation. But you can see for yourself, we have a very, very long cost. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure, and I don't want to know what do we have from uh, Riches Bay all the way to, to 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 the port of Namibia. I hope we are not vulnerable. Um, but for me, if you if you have pirates, insurgents, smuggling, these are all the things that sabotage the economy. And the economy of South Africa benefits everyone. And uh, as the chief says, this is a, everybody's problem. Um, so I believe that. We, as much as we have budget constraint, we need to really sit amongst ourselves, the industry and the defense force, and um, look at the solutions that we can provide. Um, now, if you talk about, I've just listed few people that I think actually should be here in this conference. Uh, um, I'm glad that uh, for a change, the eyes here, Pongan, Siabong. But again, even within the, Depar the Department of Defense Force, I'm not too sure whether we are really coordinated. Um, and I think these are the things that we need to make sure that we deal with. Uh, we cannot 
buy in isolation. We already have a very small amount of money. So we need to really try and consolidate our resources for, for so, so to acquire effectively. Um, Chief, um, during uh, last night, um, family meeting, um, uh, Admiral Mkondo and Admiral Nkomonde, um, we had this discussion and uh, we've made the commitment to ourselves that the next conference will have all these people because uh, we appreciate the leadership you've given to us, but we think it's our turn to elevate and, and take it forward because until we have all these people uh, coordinated and we talk one language, the, the, the challenge of the security in the border will remain a big challenge. Uh, there are solutions in South Africa that uh, one can consider because if you look at, again, you look at, we have a really quite a vast coast. And again, having ships is not sufficient, it's not enough. We, we need other solutions. So we believe that uh, the other challenge we have, uh, I've said create social awareness at border station. I put the border deliberately because like Admiral, you've, you mentioned that uh, the coast is always seen as a subordinate to the border. To this end, I'm not really sure how much the, the, the newly established um, border management authority has engaged the, the maritime environment. I hope that they're not gonna just focus on, on the borderline. They are important, but I think we should actually change the coast and call it a border so that everybody can <laughs> take it seri as serious as it should be. Um, so I, I think uh, that that's an area, and I believe that if the organizers can understand that at least next year, we need to make sure that the border management authority is part of this conference for us to, 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 to move forward. I just put in a very high level kind of solution that um, we have looked at in terms of what can be done. If, if you look down there, we, 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 there are optical cameras that you can install on the already existing infrastructure. I, I think Mr. Green mentioned that there is infrastructure that is existing. So we need to relook at that, probably put optical cameras, put some radars that you can install on these infrastructures but we, we need to have also eyes in the sky and we need some kind of a drone. And again, we don't need to buy new drones. Uh, some of them are already in the inventory of the Defense Force. All we need to know is, to, all we need to do is to share intelligence, share information, and at least maybe have a, a, some sort of a central command place where we can send information and then it can be distributed. And we already have these solutions in South Africa. Um, we also have um, some um, long range uh, cameras that we can track the movement on the ports. So the solutions are there. What we need is to find a way to collaborate, to work together, because in the long term, it's for the benefit of our, of our country. Um, like I said, I didn't want to take long. This is my very short presentation. I know the senior citizens need to break, so I am conscious of that. Um, but. What I just wanna do, if uh, you can help me there, just play me a clip on the, what the benefit of these eyes in the skies can do. Just a one minute, you don't have a video there. Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. So I will just urge you, when we were, Hansold was here about around March, we flew some, uh, as part of the demonstration, we had some aircraft that was on the sky and around about five, we could see the Abalone poaching in the Combs Bay. Uh, there's a video there that is, is playing, just have a look at it. We could track these guys from, from when they took the boat from the sea into the van and as they distribute and they had escort. So this, this is raw information that we have that the, the security agents should have, should use. And, but because we were operating in silos, we, we're not doing that. So in conclusion, I would like to and uh, this uh, discussion by saying thank you very much. Um, I hope we have the nice con conference for the rest of the evening. Thank you.